Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Live at 555 today on this Tuesday morning. I hope you guys are having a, a blessed day. Um, it's good to see you. And we are going to be in James chapter 2, looking at verses 2 through 4 today. As we have uh, James uh, talking to us about um, showing partiality. So James chapter 2. Uh, verses 2 through 4, James says this. He says, For if there should come into your assembly a man with gold rings and fine apparel, and there should also come in a poor man in filthy clothes, and you pay attention to the one wearing the fine clothes, and say to him, You sit in a good place, and say to the poor man, You stand there or sit at my footstool. Have you not shown partiality among yourselves and become judges with evil thoughts? James told us yesterday in James chapter 2 verse 1, he says, My brethren, do not hold the faith of the Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord of glory, with partiality. So James is telling us as believers that we shouldn't be holding back the faith with partiality Choosing who we're going to share Jesus with based upon who they are or who they're not or what they look like or whatever the circumstance. And to prove his point, uh, to give an example of partiality, he starts in verse number two. He goes, for instance, now it's very much possible that this was something that the church back then struggled with. So he grabs a hold of an example that would have really hit him right where it counts because of what they were guilty of doing back then. So he goes, for example, let's say, for instance, if there should come into your assembly, if there should come into church, he says, a man with gold rings and fine apparel, and there should also come in a poor man in filthy clothes. He goes, here's the scene. You're in church. All of a sudden, two guys walk in through the door. One guy, he's got gold rings. He's got fancy clothes on. He rolled up in a Ferrari or a, a Lamborghini or, or, or just a nice vehicle. There's another guy. He rolls in. This car, it barely made it into the parking lot. And he, he's got no jewelry on. He's got ratty clothes on. He actually probably even smells a little bit. You got these two characters that have just walked into the church building. And James says, let's say in verse 3, that you pay attention to the one wearing the fine clothes and say to him, you sit here in a good place. And you say to the poor man, you stand there or sit here at my footstool. You see this guy with his rings and his nice clothes and you say, oh, come with me, brother. Let me give you the best seat in the house. And you, you look at the, the poor guy who doesn't look very good on the outside and you say to him, ah, you, you just find wherever. You sit in the back corner. You sit at my footstool. James says, if you've just done that, verse 4, have you not shown partiality among yourselves and become judges with evil thoughts? This is interesting for us to think about because it's something we can fall into the trap of doing. For instance, let's say if you know for certainty that this coming Sunday, which by the way, this Sunday we're gathering back together at church here at Calvary Chapel, Sam, at 9 a.m. or 11 a.m., hope to see you there. But let's say this coming Sunday, we would post on our Facebook page here, attention everyone, this Sunday, May 10th, Mother's Day, we're having a special guest. And that special guest would be a famous person you look up to. They just happen to be in the area and they've, they've reached out to us and let us know that they're going to be coming to Calvary Chapel Salmon. Maybe it would be someone famous in the Christian world. Maybe we're going to have worship being led by Chris Tomlin or, or I Am They or one of your favorite worship bands. Or maybe we're going to have Greg Laurie come and guest speak, we would say. What the, and you knew that. and you Oh man, in that morning, maybe you just spent a little bit more time making sure you looked good. Maybe when you came to church and, and you saw your favorite uh, whoever, famous person in the doors here of Calvary Chapel Salmon, you say, oh, well, hey, so, so nice to see you. You know, we have a coffee bar up front. W would you like me to, to help you with some, some coffee? Oh, sure, that'd be great. And you get Chris Tomlin a nice 
cup of coffee and all this nice stuff. But that very same Sunday, in walks another person. And this guy, he's nothing special. You've never seen him before. He, he's not dressed fancy. He has no reputation in your sight. He smells a little bit. He seems a little off too, quite honestly, when you look at him. And you completely ignore this guy. You don't offer him coffee. You don't shake his hand. You don't welcome him to the church. James says, that's an evil motive. Why? Why would you treat people differently? James is saying, especially when it comes to the house of God. Why are you seeing people differently? Because as humans, we look at the outwardness of man. But the Lord says in 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 7, he says, I see people different than people see people. The Lord says, people look at people on the outward. God says, I look at people on the heart. When we choose to treat people that look good outwardly better than people who don't look as good outwardly, what we've done is we've said, we've made an evil judgment, James says in verse 4. We've said, your heart must be better because you look better. And the guy that doesn't look as good or the guy that doesn't fit in as well or the guy that smells a little funny, we say, your heart must not be in the right place. We're going to treat you differently. And James says, that should not be the case. He says it's an evil thought. It's a bad game for you to be playing when you start judging whose heart is in the right place based upon their outward appearance. He says you don't know. And he says that's good. He says it's not, it's not your job to know. It's God's job to know. Your job is to just be nice. Your job is to just treat, do the best you can to treat everyone the same. That's right, there's, there's a famous one more famous than, than anyone, and that's Jesus. And Jesus is going to be here this Sunday at Calvary Chapel Salmon. <laughs> yeah, so be sure to come out because uh, he's going to show up because we're going to be gathered together as his church. So that's, that's a big one for sure. But Jesus didn't practice this kind of uh, stuff in his life. Uh, he, he wasn't guilty of treating the, the, the rich better than the poor. He, he, he was actually almost the other way. He said, man, the, 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 the least of least, the, 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 the cast out. The low of low. You see, so often we think, man, if I could just get this prominent person in the community saved, if we could just get so and so led to the Lord, if you're in school, if I could just get the cheerleader or the football uh, team or, or, or whoever saved, then we would really see. He, here's the problem the people we care about the most generally care about us the least. The people that, that, that impress us the most aren't impressed by us at all and we think man lord if i could only save this prominent member lord share the gospel with them lord and see them come to faith then you could really do great things through them and make a big impact for your kingdom yeah that's true god wants to see everyone saved but it's generally the kid who sits alone at the cafeteria at lunch it's generally the the, the person that's not in the inn that's that's uh in a moment of being able to hear and receive the gospel. And James says, man, do not fall into the trap of treating people differently. You see, at the foot of the cross, this is kind of cliche, but we'll use it. At the foot of the cross, the ground is level. There is no hierarchy system when it comes to coming to faith in Jesus. Level ground at the foot of the cross. It doesn't matter what nationality. It doesn't matter where you're from. It doesn't matter what language you speak. It doesn't matter who you voted for or didn't vote for. It doesn't matter what tax bracket you're in. It doesn't matter what kind of clothes you wear, what kind of vehicle you drive. Jesus says, my grace is sufficient. My blood cleanses anyone who's simply willing to say, Lord, here I am. I'm a sinner and I want to be saved by your grace. That's the heart that the Lord is looking for. We shouldn't be impressed with man's outwardness. We should be looking for hearts. The Lord is concerned with the heart. We've been seeing that throughout the past few Sunday mornings, dealing with the Sermon on the Mount. Jesus is concerned with man's heart. Man's heart is the problem, but man's heart is also where the solution takes place. And we need to be sure that, that we focus in on that and say, Lord, help me not show this partiality 
Lord, it's so easy for me to fall into the trap of seeing someone with a, a, a cool whatever or a fancy this and, and, and a good looking that. And I want to treat them in a, in a different way or a special way than the guy that doesn't have anything. And ultimately, he calls those evil motives. Why? Because... Why are you treating the person who looks like they're rich better than the person who's poor? Because at the end of the day, you're thinking that guy who looks better can do more stuff for you. Man, I'm going to be nice to that person. I'm going to buddy to them. I'm going to bring them coffee because they're going to be able to help me in whatever way more than this guy who doesn't look like they have anything to bring to the table. And James would say that's a selfish motive. That's not how it works. We're to be selfless. Jesus freely gave we freely received, and we need to freely give out the gospel, our t attitude, or whatever. We just need to not be showing partiality or favoritism. So that's what James has to say for us today. And, and he'll expand on this point a little bit more uh, tomorrow as well as we continue in chapter 2. But he's just making a, a good point right now. Don't fall into this trap. Don't think that just because someone's got something that they're more special than the person that doesn't. Because they're not. We're all, we're all the same. We're all messed up. We all got our own problems. It's fine, to, it's fine to have stuff. Just don't let that stuff have you. And don't think that that stuff's going to get you any further in the kingdom. Because it's not. What's going to get you far in God's kingdom is him having your heart. He wants a pure heart. He wants a, he wants a broken heart, actually. We need to come to the Lord with a broken heart and say, God, I'm messed up. I got a lot of stuff, Lord, and I'm messed up. I don't got much stuff, Lord, and I'm messed up. But I'm coming to you, the God who can make me whole. That's all that God wants to hear from us. That's all Jesus wants from you and me. So let's pray, and uh, we'll get on with our day on this Tuesday morning. Heavenly Father, God, we just thank you for this morning. Um, God, we thank you for your love and for your grace. And Jesus, thank you that you did not show partiality to us. Lord, you did not show favoritism. Lord, that at the foot of the cross, the ground is level. And Lord, whosoever would believe will be saved. And Lord, as your people, Lord, you've called us to not show partiality either. Lord, to not treat people different because what they look like or what they act like or what they have or what they don't have. But Lord, that we would just see people as people. Lord, that we would realize we're all messed up. But Lord, your blood... Um, your blood was shed for all of us. And Lord, that's what makes us special. So Lord, help us not have a, a mindset of partiality today. And Lord, uh, show us ways where we maybe need to fix those things in our lives. Uh, just be with us today, God, and thank you for the beautiful morning that it is. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hope you guys have a great Tuesday morning. Hey, if you're out and about this morning... Um, swing by uh, Rise and Shine Espresso and grab yourself a coffee or uh, some a breakfast burrito is what I always like. They got great breakfast burritos. They got great cinnamon rolls. And they have these pineapple upside down buns that are awesome. Today they're giving 15% of their proceeds to Hope's Place, which is a uh, ministry here in Salmon that we at Calvary Chapel Salmon partner with. And they're a pregnancy support center uh, for people in the community um, to uh, educate them on uh, pregnancy and to give them an option and to uh, um, encourage pro-lifeness. So stop by uh, Rise and Shine if you're out and about today. They're going to support uh, Hope's Place today. And uh, we would love to just support them as they support uh, this local ministry that is uh, Jesus-based and that is uh, pro life. So uh, if you live in the Salmon area, out and about, swing by there and do that. That would be great. Hope you guys have a blessed day. It's a beautiful day to serve the Lord. So getting out and about and uh, don't show partiality. Love some people. And uh, we'll be back together this morning at uh, or tomorrow morning. I'm reading comments as I'm talking. They great reason to go for a great hot mocha. That's right. It gives you an excuse to go get a nice a nice drink or, or a nice goodie today. So anyway, have a blessed morning. We'll see you tomorrow morning live at 555.